Broadway laundrette in Blythe, and it's Thursday the 5th of November, but around here, every day is the same. It's a 21st century tumbleweed town, Northumberland in slumber, and this morning they called her a moron, but Maria is her name. Five days a week, four types of coin, three types of powder, and both types of dirty laundry. The dirtier, the better. A conveyor belt for dignity or dull cue for pittance. A one bed you can walk to or a two bed in the sticks. The sorry pathetic blunder from the third machine on the left and then the symphony of silence at 5.59. 15 hours freedom. Maria limps down Newsom Road with feet as sore as Sunday's head. Obligation waits at home before the haven of her bed. Cheap cards on a mental piece as sentiments are echoed. The evening starts to lose its fizz with a warming glass of Prosecco. The boyfriend leaves at seven for the bonfire at the quay, leaving Maria sat as mum starts to snore on the settee. Sat stubbornly, she smiles beneath the window, struggling to surrender any fucks. Her solitary 22nd birthday, the adulthood of two little ducks. And she drifts between an evening on the Bombay and the Blow, diluting her dilemma. Should she stay or should she go? Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Abbott. Welcome to this week's Insta Session. For those of you who don't know, um, we've been running these Insta Sessions every week since the start of May. I really enjoy it. I've been very fortunate in um, being joined by some of my favourite poets from around the UK and even further afield. We've had uh, poets from Sweden and the US as well. And tonight, uh, I'm being joined by Ella Dorman Gajic. Um, she is a poet, playwright and performer from Brighton. She is the co-host uh, of Off the Chest Spoken Word Night. She's performed poetry and theatre all over the UK and I'm very excited to join her. Um, I'm very excited for her to join me. I'll invite her onto the call. Should be here in a sec. Here we go. Hello. Hiya. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. Yeah, nice to see you. Lovely to see you too. Thank you so much for having me. I reckon you're... Are you based out east as well? East London? Uh, no, I'm not actually East London. I'm in West London. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm like I'm... a traitor. Because um, obviously off the chest is in East, um, but I have to travel all the way there every month, which is a pain in the ass for me. But I like going to my land very much. <laughs> I'm not with you already. Like 20 seconds into the call, I do apologise. I just thought you'd be the first person I think that I've spoken to that's also in East London. Like of all the places around the UK, like you'd be the most, but never mind. Yeah, I, I live in West with my auntie at the moment. Um... If I had it my way, I would like to live in East. So I've got my, I've got my eye on East. I'm browsing. <laughs> it's all right. It's good fun. It's good fun. Um, so you're from Brighton originally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you've performed all over the UK, Edinburgh, Norwich, um, all over the shop. Is there anywhere in particular that you've enjoyed performing the most? I know that's a tough question, but. Wow. Um, I think I have to say Edinburgh Fringe just because. I think it teaches you so much as a performer. It's not all plain sailing. Like, it's not necessarily the most enjoyable. Um, even though you have your biggest highs and your biggest lows, I'm sure you've experienced it as well. You've performed at the Fringe, haven't you? Yeah. It's like poetry. Yeah. It's like the former boot camp, isn't it? Mm, exactly, mm. exactly. Uh, so I would say for that reason, I probably enjoyed it as an experience to remember. At the time, I was probably hating it, like why the fuck did I come here? But you look back and it's, yeah, it's it's all for the best. <laughs> um, so were you uh, performing a theatre piece there or were you performing spoken word? I actually performed at Edinburgh three different occasions. Um, so the first year I went, I went with a collective Bright Brighton based called Poets vs MCs. I don't know if you've heard of oh, them. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and we performed at the Banshee Labyrinth and a couple other places around the city. And then the next year I brought my own spoken word theatre piece to Edinburgh for a couple of weeks, uh, which was really stressful. <laughs> 
<laughs> but as I say, it was a, a great learning curve. Um, and then the year after I was acting and, um, and kind of devising and producing a play. Uh, uh, so I've done, I've done it three times. <laughs> um, uh, and every time it's been a completely different experience and different things get thrown at you every year. So, uh, yeah. yeah, three different hats on. Mm, so, like, yeah. um, so when you say, so spoken word theatre show, um, presumably an hour long how what was the format like I'm always intrigued what was how did what was how was it um when you say spoken word theatre show as in why was it not a play I'm very intrigued as in I don't mean that in a bad way like I'm fascinated mm. by it I love it mm. oh yeah I know what you mean um uh so I actually wrote it originally as like a compilation of poems that were essentially around the same theme of growing up as a girl today and like trying to navigate womanhood and all of that messy stuff. So yeah. I didn't write it for me. I wrote it to be performed, but not necessarily like as a theatre piece, but my background is very much in theatre. And um, so I collaborated with a friend who is a dancer. So we kind oh. of created like a, a show that was I guess like we did create a narrative because we created characters within the poems um but I wouldn't say like it had like the rise and fall of a play because each piece was standalone so it's kind of like pieces that ran together with movement and poetry that were all on the same theme of womanhood um wow. Yeah, so that's why I, I kind of gravitate towards saying it's more of like a theatre piece because I write plays as well and my approach to writing plays is very <laughs> different because um, yeah. I kind of have to plan it all out. Rather with poetry, I'm kind of like, oh, I'm just drawn to writing about this theme and then they all kind of come together. Uh, I yeah. don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's fascinating. That's why I asked because I know that obviously you're a playwright as well. So I was just curious to see how you introduce poetry into a theatrical setting. Because um, mm -hmm. obviously, like even doing like a twenty-minute set, you do sort of think about the flow of it, but it's not the same as putting into a show, is it? So I was, I was just curious. Like that sounds fascinating. Sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that you are a playwright first and foremost, and then a poet, or vice versa, or is it difficult to? Uh, I think it's actually really difficult because um, I actually started writing poetry first, but. Um in terms of like writing to show people and I felt more confident about it but then I did a degree in script writing so okay. um, <laughs> um uh, because like I'd kind of come into the world of the arts through theatre so I kind of like um yeah and then I was like oh I'll, I'll meld the two so I did write this uh the first play like proper I would class as a play was actually um a play that actually had characters who like wrote poems. <laughs> so kind of, nice. The, the poems were within actually within the narrative of the play. Um, but I suppose some years I think like I can only write a play and some years I'm like, I can only write poetry. It's like happens in years. So like last year, I was like working on like a really long play and um, I finished it and I hadn't written like any poetry that whole year. And then this year I'm pretty much only writing poetry. So it's really difficult to like say which one, to be honest. Um, fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. That's fascinating to get an insight into your, your, you know, your process and how you bounce between. And I guess one might inform the other and one might trigger something off in the other. It's just really interesting to see how different writers operate really. <laughs> Um, do you fancy doing a poem? I'd love to do a poem. Cool. Cool. Um, so this first poem is titled To Satisfy and it's inspired by a Terence Hayes poem titled Wind in a Box. Um, and it goes like this. I want to always live in the conviction of the lioness in the giddiness of not stopping for air. I never want to follow those with an empty chest. I want to remember the scents we spewed, spliced with 2 a.m. beer breath. I want to compose a song of your soft howls at the football through the walls. 
I never want sand stuck in my throat. If a penguin steals rocks to make a nest for his lover, I want to take everything I can to make my body your home. I want the blazing dress on my busy thigh. I want the toothbrush bristles on my busy tongue. I never want the feel of Sunday night. I want to be the train ticket in your pocket. I never want to live without a journey, but I want the cuddle of crap telly. If water on Mars means life, then I want to drink in all this world can splash at me. I want the last cold pizza slice in your empty kitchen, bum perched on the surface. I want the, mor I want the mornings that budge into afternoons, but I don't want the grandma's guilt or the snail's shame. I want the sunset's glory. I want to chase your kiss into the silent alleyway, but I don't want that to turn to the butter knife of nostalgia. I want an ear full of curiosity that travels up to the Sistine Chapel and I want you to satisfy its winding, its unpredictable nooks and tunnels. I want the praise of the stage, but I also want the curtains to make me clueless again. I don't want to be caught in others' fires, but I want to blaze their kindling anew. I want to make a sofa out of you, where I will read this, once I am proud of my heart, knowing I cannot satisfy all my wants. You cannot satisfy all my wants, but when I go, my wants from this world will be all but firewood, heavy with memory. Thank you. Wow, that was beautiful. What a, what a poem to start on, bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, so many <laughs> incredible images in there and so many, just I just went so many, yeah, yeah. That was great. I will never be a judge uh, on the show because I can never give articulate feedback, but that was just beautiful. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Is that um, a relatively... Yeah. Sorry, go on. Oh, no, 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 carry on. Oh, I was just curious, is that a relatively new poem or is it a... Yeah, I was actually about to say that. So I, I wrote this poem at the end of the last lockdown. So I guess it was kind of about yearning and wanting, but like, do I really want to go outside again kind of thing? Um, and I read that Terence Hayes poem and I was like, wow, that's like all the things that I feel. I don't know if you read a poem and you're like, crap um so I was like oh I really want to like put this into like my mindset that I'm feeling right now um so yeah I wrote at the end of last lockdown and I guess I kind of wanted to explore like the dichotomy between like wanting to do everything and be everyone all the time but also like wanting to just not <laughs> as well um yeah yeah, yeah absolutely just the, the cuddle of crap telly and the just all of it just even even the last slice of cold pizza i was just like yeah perfectly captured the mood yeah brilliant because we're taught to go full throttle out we want we have to do everything in the extreme and fomo and all that stuff and obviously this year it's just been like yeah yeah, yeah. i know it really has i was also gonna say um all the poems i'm gonna do i've written within the last year so oh, a wow. lot of them, like cool really quite fresh <laughs> but I, I think it really pushes me to perform them pushes me to like have them and have a goal to refine them um so Absolutely. that's what I'm like working towards yeah yeah I guess in a way like a poem's never properly finished until you've performed it a few times mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah I totally agree I totally agree with that yeah, because you, you, so you co, you co-founded and host Off the Chest, is that right? Yeah, with yeah. Uh, Ithaca, so we actually had our first birthday in October, so, wow, that was like nearly two months ago now, it feels like yesterday. <laughs> um, I, I, on our first birthday, it was like, I feel like I met Ifty yesterday and suddenly it's been our first birthday and we've run an organization together which is like incredible yeah i literally met him in the beginning of september and then we decided to put our first one on in october so it was very instantaneous cool. uh, but we had such a great reaction and uh yeah such great crowds every single time so we we were really sad that we had to like 
stopped doing in real life events in March, but we've managed to like carry on as many poetry nights have through the lockdown, which yeah. has been really great. Yeah. Uh, do, do you find that um, as a writer, do you find, uh, well, basically what I'm saying, I host a lot of nights as well. And I think it improves me tenfold because I see people that I wouldn't necessarily have seen. And I don't know, just being in that live environment all the time, especially when you're not performing, you sort of in, enjoy it a bit more. You know, like when you're doing a set, you're like, Ooh. yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's improved you as a writer or do you think you've learned anything as a writer? Like, do you think you think about your poems a bit more? Like, I, I'm just curious to see how other mm -hmm. people experience it basically. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the first couple ones, Ifty and I were both so nervous about the actual event going well. <laughs> we were almost like we're trying to listen to the poems, but then we're also trying to figure out like, tickets and all this sort of stuff so I'm sure you get that as well um yeah. but yeah the last three ones were definitely like such standout moments in my life so far because they just all the poets have been such incredible standards and um so diverse as well which I think actually does make my enjoyment of poetry just yeah it widens my enjoyment of poetry like different styles of poetry come my way and that obviously has a big impact on the way I write as well so yeah it's a real blessing oh Ifty's here oh, hey. I have to ask Ifty to do a sesh yes you have to he's so good he's got some amazing poems amazing poems um yeah like like you say obviously as a poet the best thing you can do is read as diverse a range of poets as you can and obviously buying all the books in Waterstones isn't really something we can do so being at these nights yeah. is so rich in it uh, and even if it's just an open mic and just doing one poem it's such a rich experience yeah 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 cool mm -hmm. well I hope to be at one of your nights once they exist again that would be really cool um, yeah fancy reading another poem I'd love to cool, cool. I'd absolutely love to um, okay, this next poem is called, Doo -doo -doo -doo. it's titled, Should Have Just Told You to WhatsApp. <clears throat> and I don't know if you write letters, I don't know if that's something people still do, uh, but it's sort of around that concept. And it goes like this. I imagine receiving it, my name on a tea-stained envelope. Your slow-cooked adorations burn through the pages. I sigh, <sighs> tuck them beneath my wanting breast, bleeding ink onto white linen. My fanciful image of you, quill tickling moustache, sweat dousing scroll, contemplating us. My skin a succulent sin, my chin a dainty hook. My body, the pasture you gaze into, Austin style, conjuring sentences with divine eloquence. I sift through post for weeks, set up camp next to the letter flap, lift it up and knock it down, push my fingers through the thick fringe. Wrist gets trapped in the gap as I try to pull something out. I wail to the postwoman, now she's calling the ambulance round. When you asked for my address, I didn't think I'd lose body parts. Ghosting is much simpler over WhatsApp. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, imagine it's, you sort of know after a few days that you've been ghosted. Imagine waiting weeks for a letter. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was like. Well, I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. But, you know, brilliant poem. For all pain comes good poetry, at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I was like, there's a poem in here somewhere. So I was definitely expecting a letter from somebody. <sighs> Very detailed love letter. It never came. But one day, maybe. <laughs> it, <laughs> maybe it just got, who knows? It might have been lost in the post somewhere. Who knows? Um, yeah, maybe um, you hear this. <laughs> I'm conscious that I've been talking a lot, so and it's Tento, so if you would like to... Oh I know, I know, I'm sorry, I've been chatting away with you. Um, it, so I just thought I'd let you know if you've got a few more. I don't know, it depends how many you've got, but... Um, yeah, 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 I have got a few more. <laughs> yeah, cool, so sorry. I guess I will 
I've actually got um, some quite small ones. So I'll do uh, a couple small ones that just like carry on from each other. Pretty cool. Much. Also, um, if we ever run a tad, it doesn't matter because Bake Off's finished now. So it's fine. Oh, great. Time that really well for me. <laughs> Uh, um, right, so I'll kick off with this one, uh, which is a really short one titled A Tad Extreme. After he leaves, you smile at air for hours, steal a baby rabbit in search of something softer, douse yourself in vodka to feel something dizzier, crawl into the kitchen shelf, but nothing is sweeter. So you open a bag of sugar and swim. Sticky, you sleep next to a chasm. At the edge, you roll in. It is the closest thing to him climbing back in. And I wrote that one. Um, this is a very lockdown-y theme uh, going on. But I wrote, wrote that one at the beginning of the last lockdown, actually. And mm. I wrote this one um, sort of at the middle of the last lockdown. And it's titled sirens we said we noticed them more when watering the plants sipping coffee making lunch we stopped we listened until sound absorbed into concrete and comprehension but now they do laps around our living room each time a new best score in bed between bromolia leaves, splice themselves with the cheese. We stir the noise into our coffee. It dissolves with the sugar. We chat over sips, not stopping to listen when they start again. Nice, love that. Um, thank you. And um, uh, I have one which is, uh, also reasonably short, uh, which I can add to the pile of short poems, because uh, cool. I'm aware of the time. Um, and I, I don't want to feel rushed. I do apologise. I just thought I just wanted to give you a, a rough idea, that's all. Oh, no, 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 that's totally fine. I'm like such a chatterbox as well, so I just don't notice <laughs> the time when it goes really quickly. I guess that's why I like writing poems and performing poems, because I know when it's going to end, and I have a very like certainty <laughs> about it. It's yeah. like, just say this, Ella. Don't say anything more. Just say the poem that you've written. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it's been so lovely speaking to you. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, um, likewise. Thank you for doing it. Oh. Uh, so this one is called um, When Time is a Small Child. And it's about my oldest friend. I would walk to yours every morning to straighten my hair before school. Roll up our skirts and march in Primani plimsolls past the boys. Gossip who got with who or you getting sent out for drawing a dick on my planner. Once you dyed your hair a cherry aid scarlet. I told you I loved it until I couldn't. Home time was Vimpto from the offie leaving gravel on our teeth and a tight chaos in our hearts. Hearts. The 39p frazzles and chipsticks. The Freddos, before they broke the bank. At 14, we nicked your mum's vodka, swallowed the sleeping town and chucked it up at the top of the high street. Believed we could outrun a policewoman down a cul-de-sac. <laughs> our minds, cement mixers spilled too early. My face pushed to the pavement and your voice running the school route home. Sobs to you soaking my phone. Thinking it had all ended then until Monday when we did it all over again. Now I type the address of your new flat into Google Maps. Linger outside like stalling an audition for a new life. Your belly is still swollen and your A-cup bras are definitely a thing of the past. He's so big already. Eyes like a riddle. Think you're confused? Try me. We drink wine not stolen from our parents. 
and you have created something breathing when I still snack on 3 p.m. chipsticks and there's so much I may never understand. I do my best to carry the weight of him. His eyes open like the universe did once and I glimpse the same smile as the day you asked me. Are you walking this way? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Wow, what a what a journey. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. You're, you're an adult. <laughs> There's something um really beautiful and powerful, I think, about female friendship. Um and just yeah, that insight is just fantastic. Yeah, I love it. and like the contrasts and the similarities and the yeah, no, I love that. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's that moment you realise like Am I an adult now? I don't. I don't know. Nobody's told me yet. But um... I'm. I'm nearly thirty-two, and I still don't know. I've got no idea. <laughs> it's yeah, fine. it's one of those things, isn't it? Um. Uh. Cool. Do I have time? Oh, I've got yeah. three minutes. <gasps> I'm like, yeah. If you're up for it, it would be lovely to get one more. If if you game. Mm mm. Cool. I would love to do another one. Um. Just thinking, I have a few options now. Uh, okay. okay. Don't, don't worry about it overrunning a minute or two. Just just relax and do your thing. It's all good. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm going to do this one, and it's titled Happiness is Free Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> I haven't performed it uh, I, since... I performed it in, in March, um, and that was sort of the first and only time I've performed it. So I would quite like to perform it again, because cool. I've done a little editing job jobby uh it's more of a prose poem i suppose you could say which makes me sound very important um <laughs> <laughs> i think i've done it right um so it's yeah it's called happiness is is free wi-fi and it's after the billboard in ealing broadway shopping center which literally says happiness is free wi-fi and uh honestly such inspiration um <laughs> <laughs> uh, it goes like this contentment walks into a coffee shop is offered super speed free wi-fi with her blueberry muffin under 100 calories fuck me contentment gleams the newfound happiness shows her an island in the bahamas where they have bikinis and water that passionately humps the sky the muffin tastes of fairies having a rave on a cloud inside her mouth. She sits on the loo, loading further happiness, an image of a woman who almost looks like her. Captioned, love yourself. She is wearing a backless dress, the type that makes skin look like freshly rolled dough. The shoulder blades, pizza cutters, and the spine a slick, chilly curl. Contentment had forgotten she had a backbone. A hollow rumbling says those 93 calories weren't enough though. An ad pops up. Two for Tuesdays, Domino's, 50 meters away. She looks at the numbers on her Santander, her gym membership. That night, she licks the grease from a pizza box whilst doing squats. <laughs> Picks at the flesh of dough and the knobbly spine of cheese. Eyes up the bend of her shoulder blades. Wonders how much she can eat before they bury under. Types back Pilates exercises into YouTube. Her thumb grows numb from moving all of that happiness. The length of their eyelashes, the kale and brown rice, the bodycon that wraps like a bandage round their perky arse. She responds appropriate emojis to everyone's stories. New Nikes, fire. New lipstick, heart eyes. Koala bear battles crisis temperatures, crying face. Then she books that holiday to the Bahamas, orders 50 bikinis, decides between the organic Himalayan celery cleanse or the deep stem vegan carrot cleanse, buys pizza cutters and sews them onto her backbone, draws waterproof contours onto each cheek. Before she leaves, she walks into a coffee shop, orders a blueberry muffin and asks for their happiness. They tell her it's down. Oh. 
What's in the muffin? Blueberries and calories. The berry slides down her throat like a regret as she, looked, as she looks around at contentment, sitting at tables, laughing. <laughs> nice. Very powerful. I like that a lot. Really got me with a koala bears. Just, uh, just pulling me in with the emojis and then bang, yeah, no, that's, that's, that was a brilliant point. Thank you. I'm really glad you did that. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on this stream. My pleasure. Thank you so much for giving up your time and sharing your work and sharing your insights. It's, it's great. Um, yeah, like I say, I'll, uh, I'll have to get in touch with IFTA and, get, and hopefully come to one of your nights when they ex get started again in my lane, because I'm only down the road. So, cool. Yeah, you're in East Ham, right? Yeah, yeah, not too far. I'm the old Hammersmith and City. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's really close. Yeah. I'm hoping well, to be back soon. Fingers crossed. We'll see. Well, thank you very much. Um, take care until then. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks a mil. You were fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. And I'll awesome. see you soon. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. That was Ella Dormangaji. Uh, please give her a follow. It's at Ella DG. And I think off her chest is at off her underscore chest. But it's on Ella's profile. So at Ella DG. Um, Next week, we're not doing an Insta session because we're doing a big premiere event on Thursday night. Uh, that'll be on Facebook between eight and nine. Uh, we'll be announcing it at the end of this week, so keep an eye out on that. Um, but all of the previous 25 sessions are available to watch back on IGTV, YouTube, Facebook, and all that jazz. Um, so thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. Ella was fantastic. My name's Matt Abbott. We are Nimson Folks.